What's up guys, hope you're all doing well, hope you're all safe. Today we are talking about Star Wars Visions. Before I begin, I do have my fan on. It's very hot today, I don't know why. Um, even though it just rained. But, we're talking about Star Wars Visions. I'm going to be speaking a bit louder, so hopefully I could block out the fan. Like always, I took down my notes, right? Boom, 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 right, all right. I'm not going to say everything that I wrote here, but um, let's begin, right? So... I really loved it. I loved every episode except for one, which if you watch it or if you plan to watch it or if you watched it, you know which episode I'm going to be talking about. Um, we're going to be going episode by episode, what I liked about it. And let's start with episode one, the duel, right? We start off with this Ronin just uh, coming into this town, right? He's trying to fix his droid, right? Just, just trying to make his way downtown, right? And, like always, problems start. But before we talk about the problems, let's talk about how it was animated. Very old school. My generation from a kid till now has never seen like the old school kind of grayish, black and white type of animations because that wasn't our generation. I really loved that. I really loved how they kept it old school. So, we see the Ronin. He's just trying to get his droid fixed and keep it pushing. Bandits come into town. They're starting trouble. I really like when the bandits come because this is when you see the references to the Star Wars universe. Yes, it's not like, oh, um, that's connected to this. No, like we see a creature that looks like Bosk, which if you've seen Star Wars or if you haven't, right, he's a bounty hunter and he kind of looks like a, a reptile, right? So we see that creature. So that's kind of like a reference. We see um, a AP-5 droid holding a minigun. We've seen him in other Star Wars content, right? We see somebody driving a damn probe droid, right? So they're giving all these like little references to Star Wars. Even though it's their story, they get to do whatever they want. They say, hey, look, like this is still Star Wars. And actually, if you go to the beginning of when they showed the village, you could see in the background a poster for the original um, A New Hope, right? For that movie, you can see the poster in the background. Like, you could take it side by side. It's the same thing. So, they're saying, hey, this is our story, but don't forget, this is Star Wars. So, we see the bandits come. They're making a mess. Ronan's about to pull up because... He's just like, all right, they could probably handle it. But then a Sith comes out, and he's just like, hold, hold up. He goes down there, they meet, and to all of our surprises, right, when he takes out his lightsaber, it's red. So now we're seeing something that we haven't really seen is Sith versus Sith, right? They start going at it. The, the fighting for the old school animation was amazing. I loved it, right? I feel like they kind of gave a reference, spoiler, right? To the Revenge of the Sith with the last fight. I don't want to say who's fighting because I'm trying to at least not spoil too much, right? Um, so, I feel like they give a reference to that last fight because the Ronin and the Sith are kind of floating down a river, right? And they're going at it. And... So they're going at it. The people back in the village are trying to, like, protect their own village. And I really like the ending of this fight. Spoiler, but I really loved it because it shows you. Because she goes and says, hey, I haven't fought a Jedi in a long time. You can tell she's kind of out of practice, right? Because at the end of the fight, they go down the waterfall. And he hides and he puts his lightsaber down on a statue so when she gets there she's all impulse she just goes at it right like a Sith they just go they don't stop and think and look around she goes she chops it down and it's not him and he goes and he comes behind a bing and kills her I like that because it shows you are out of practice you are a Sith you are very impulsive you needed to Kind of look around you are not well who knows if she's on her planet or not but 
this is not your environment. This is not even his environment, but he's still using it. So she dies. He goes back to the village, and everybody's praising him. And I like this part because I feel like it gets you to think. So they go, they start to praise him, and they say, oh, my gosh, you're a Jedi, blah, blah. And he shows them, hey, look, like I'm not a Jedi. And he gives one of the crystals to one of the people in the town and says, hey, this will protect you. This is going to bring fear to people. And a lot of people didn't like that. I liked it because, hey, if you see a red lightsaber and you're trying to take over, you're going to be like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I got too much dip on my chip. I'm going to go to that village. So really like this episode. I feel like that part especially, like it shows you after the war, who knows, maybe you could change your mind. And then he shows us he has red kyber crystals, which means he probably changed his mind. He was a Sith. Now he knows, okay, we did bad shit. Let me go hunt down other Sith. Really love this episode 10 out of 10, right? Ah, let me fix my feet, damn it. So, let's go to episode 2. Spoilers. This whole thing's gonna be spoilers. So, but if you are here to support, love you guys. So, episode 2. I understand. Well, no. I hope this was their, their, their intentions. This was a filler episode. This was a classic filler episode for animes. If you haven't watched anime, I understand why you're upset. Like, this didn't make any sense. This was so stupid. Blah, 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 blah. And all this bullshit that you're talking about. Episode 2 was a classic filler for my people who have watched anime. There's always that one episode that is just the most randomest shit known to man. Like, they have, like, a school play to go to. They have a concert to go to. They have to sing and dance in this one, right? Like, it's that classic filler episode. I liked it because I'm thinking I'm thinking of this episode in that way. It was a good filler. But it's also the reason why I didn't give it a whole 9 out of 10 for this first season, right? But it was good. I was happy we got to see, like, a smaller version of Boba Fett. It was cute, but let's keep going, right? Let's go to episode three, which I believe was the most anticipated. My takeaway from that, I feel like they can make a show out of every episode that they did because it was really, really good, right? Number three was titled The Twins, and I feel like this was kind of based off of Luke and Leia, like if they were born into the dark side. I feel like this is how it would have gone no matter what. So, we have these twins and they end up clashing, right? We have the boy who ends up changing sides and he's like Luke. He has that hope and he says, no, we shouldn't be doing this. And basically, the whole like problem in this episode was they had a kyber crystal that they needed to fuel their suits. And I love that, that idea of using a crystal to fuel your suit because who knows? You could be freaking Iron Man with a lightsaber in one hand and start boom, boom, hitting them with the 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 ion beams or whatever the hell you want to call it because they haven't gone deeper, right? <coughs> uh, so love that aspect it was really great. Um, I like how they go head to head. And they're kind of equally matched. I feel like they were equally matched. I feel like they were really trying to reference what would have happened if Leia would have went into training. She would have been powerful. Like what Yoda said, there is one more who could have like kind of helped out in this whole situation. But for some reason, they never went into that in the movies. But I like how they fought. I feel like it was an animated the best. That's what I gotta say. I feel like out of all of these, except for episode... Which one was it? Episode 5. I love the animation on 5. I feel like the animation on 5... This one and maybe... Maybe number 7. Number 7 was top tier animations. So, let's keep going. We see them go at it. 
I think they actually referenced something that was only referenced in one show, and that was the world between worlds in Star Wars, um, in Star Wars Rebels. And basically, like, you could kind of see, like, into the past, into the future, or who knows if it was just, like, Luke using the Force. I'm gonna call the guy Luke, right? I'm just gonna call him Luke Leia. Um, and we see that he's actually looking at this with his sister, and he's just like, hey, look, if you don't stop and you don't drop that crystal, you're gonna most likely die. And she's just like, I don't care. And she still goes with it, right? And they're going at it she turns into general grievous has like a thousand lightsabers and they're going at it i really like the aspect of being able to change the length of your lightsaber on command because when she starts to get affected right he's just like okay i gotta break the crystal at least and not kill her at the same time he does this awesome thing should i spoil it um, yeah I'm gonna spoil it. He gets on his damn X-Wing with his droid. The droid flips it over. He's upside down. And he's breaking the Star Destroyer. And when he gets to her, he shrinks it perfectly. Hits her in the chest. Goes up again. As, and as soon as he passes her, he uses the lightsaber to go all the way through the damn um, Star Destroyer. And breaks it in half. It was beautiful. Great fighting. Great story. I feel like they could... Maybe, who knows, maybe use the suits, that suit idea in the future, I don't know, right? But, great story, loved it, I like how it ended, because it was another nod towards Star Wars with the twin sons, and the guy, Luke, he has the quality of a Jedi, he has the qualities of Luke, where he's talking to his droid, and he's just like, is she still out there? And we're gonna go save her. Even though she's clearly a bad guy, like, this episode was centered around Luke and Leia in my views. Great episode. I loved it. Let's talk about number four, which I feel like episode four was a little bit underrated, right? Not too many people talk about it. It's called The Village Bridge, right? Basically, we see these two random people who are now kind of like stalking these other two random people that we don't know about. We see this guy who has a queen on his back and he's walking up the hill, having a good time, they're talking, and I'm like, are they gonna, you know, smash, right? So, time goes on, we're learning about all the characters, and what ends up happening is there's a village there that doesn't really want to go to war with the bad guys, right? And the bad guys aren't, like, Sith. But they're just people who, like, have the machines and the droids that was left over from the war. <sighs> so, um, the queen goes and says, hey, look, I'm going to sacrifice myself. Give myself up to them so they don't hurt you. And then, like always, we always have a group of rebels who are going to say, no, you can't do that. We can fight, blah, blah, blah. All right? And like always, it fails. So what ends up happening is the bad guys come, they capture the rebels, and the two random people who weren't from this planet pull up. And I'm like, okay, let's see, because we figure out the person with the mask, because there's a person with the mask, um, she's using the force. And the queen knows about the force too, right? So like, they kind of like work in sync, well no, not work in sync, like they were in sync at that time. So, the bad guy comes, they basically capture the rebels, and shit just pops off. I really like when the girl with the mask, because if you watch it, it's the girl with the mask who uses force. I like how she got into a classic samurai stance. All of Star Wars was influenced by like the old Japanese samurai culture, but she really got into her stance and quick draw like if it was like an old western like they were there and she just pulled it pink she had her lightsaber she waited she waited she waited and then she just went at him boom perfectly caught the hand didn't hurt the queen beautiful that that 
episode was yes very underrated i like the animation i like the fighting style even though there was not too much fighting i feel like it was more towards like the actual story because it was kind of cute that the guy who had her on like the guy who had the queen on his back like they were kind of like lovey-dovey and i'm just like they're so cute together jesus christ even though they grew up together but still um great episode loved it I also give this one perfect score. All right. So we talked about number four. Now we're talking about number five. Number five is what everybody fucking loved. Everybody loved this damn episode. I loved it. This is the one they could, they should make a show out of. It's called the Ninth Sister. Right. We start off with a. I don't know if they call them a sabersmith. He's a guy who makes lightsabers. He has the kyber crystals, right? So he's uh, waving it around, boom, 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 and then his daughter comes in, right? And I always wanted them to do this. I always wanted them to somewhat do a story like this. The color of the lightsaber changes per person. I loved it. He gives it to the daughter and it turned gray because she still didn't establish herself within the force yet. So maybe it's green because she's stronger in the force maybe it's blue because she's still a good person but she still has a long way to go but she could still use it right or maybe hey it's red and she's a mean bad person right this episode was fucking fire i loved it because we see something that we haven't seen so basically what happens is a message got sent across this land or this planet or this system, don't know, I forgot, for the Jedi's to come together, right? Like the remaining people who survived the war. Once again, they're always referencing after a war. In any universe, there is an Order 66 that the war just went on and right? So we see these people who get called in and they're all waiting for the guy who called them in. And what ends up happening is The bad guys are trying to find the Sabersmith. They find him. They beat him up. They didn't kill him, though. So, hey, finally for the first time in some sort of damn um, show where there's like a father-daughter thing, they don't kill the dad, right? So, they go. They beat him up. She takes all the Sabers, and she's just like, I'm out of here. I have to deliver this to my guy, right? So, she's trying to go. And, yo, I kid you not, that shit was awesome. That scene right there was awesome because she's on her speeder she turns around she's letting the force guide her through the forest and she's like deflecting bullets and shit just bing 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 right and i'm like damn but like she's dodging trees and shit like she's just like excuse me excuse me excuse me so like she's connecting to the force even though her lightsaber was still gray at the time um i think it changes during later on that scene was amazing, right? So let's fast forward and we get to where all the people are at and she gets to the guy that she needs to give the lightsabers to and everybody there grabs a lightsaber and it all turns red. It's the Sith Acolytes and I was screaming, dog. I was screaming. We haven't seen this in live action or in any animated show. They're all there because they're hunting down Jedi's. And the main guy, the, um, I know his name, um, the Mavgar, Mavgar? I'm saying that wrong, most likely. He takes out his lightsaber, he's green, right? Oh, my voice cracked. And there's one green, the girl turns to blue, I think. And there's another blue one, right? So there's three good guys and like freaking six bad guys. The goddamn Mavgar, he starts clapping them. He's pulling them in. And they're trying to use the force. They're trying to get them, right? And they're just no match. But what I really liked, my favorite part of this episode was when the bad guy's lightsaber turned purple. That was my favorite part of that episode. Is because now we see he's like this. Instead of he's a bad guy or he's a good guy. No, he's here. And the map guard goes and says, hey, you don't have to do this no more. 
we can clearly tell you're not a bad guy. Great episode. Loved it. They defeat all the Sith. And the action was great. The animation was great. I love the story how at the end they're going to go and train. Because they need more now. Because most likely the bad guys won. That shit was awesome. That was the best episode in my views. Let's go to episode 6. T. Obi-Wan. This gave me Rocket Boy vibes. If you've never heard of Rocket Boy, you're probably like five right now. Um, we see this old guy. He's creating all these robots, and there's a main robot. His name is T. Obi Wan, right? And Obi Wan Kenobi. So, um, I like the visuals because it's very bright. And I know this this episode is based on this kid. And he's a young, bright kid, and like he just wants to be a Jedi and all this, but he's a robot. And this story was very unique as well. Each one of these stories are unique. They have a different, a different story that we've never seen from the comic books or the actual books, right? Like we haven't seen none of these stories. I like this one because guess what? He starts to say, "I keep on having these dreams. I keep on feeling something pulling me." He's a robot. He he technically can't have a connection to the force but in this story he does right so the the mentor the professor he goes and says all right go find yourself a crystal and come back and like always in every story that has like a mentor mentee vibe with a father figure the guy always dies so the guy dies and I, re I really enjoyed this one a bit more due to the fact of the way that T. Obi-Wan connects to the Force. It's visually what I really wanted out of any future Star Wars content. He gets into the, this like space where it's just him and his master, right? But he's a Force ghost now. But his master says hey look like you did a good job now you are a jedi this is that i feel like from now on if you do not depict communicating and being with the force like that it's always going to upset me that's just me i feel like the way that they did that part with the force was the best um but also going back to the astro boy vibes because the bad guy who kills the mentor comes back. They start fighting. He starts adding upgrades onto himself. And he starts changing. And I'm like, oh shit. Great fight. I feel like a lot of people may not like that one. Just because it's a bit too different. But episode 6 was great. Let's go into 7. 7 was awesome. I love that one. Just because this gives me Qui-Gon Jinn young Obi-Wan vibe. I'm currently reading Master and Apprentice, and it gives me those vibes. If you haven't read that book, if you're a Star Wars fan, and if you read books, that's your first one. Go after it, right? So what I wrote down here was it had a bit too much talking, but the talking was necessary, right? So they get to this planet. They hear about this elder who just ran off into the mountains, and everybody's confused. The Qui-Gon Jinn character feels a disturbance. Uh, excuse me. So they gotta go figure it out. The Obi Wan character is very eager. He wants to learn. He's a little bit impatient. He's just like, hey, look, like if there's a Sith Lord here, you gotta give it to me, man. Just like a young kid. Like when we're young, we say we could conquer the world and blah blah blah. He's like that still. He doesn't understand. Hey, this big guy who's like a thousand years old. He's he's more knowledge. Like, he has more experience, he is a better fighter. No, like, we all go and say, oh, you think you're good? I'm going to show you that you're not, and then we end up losing. So, same thing happens here. The kid meets up with the the elder who's the disturbance in the force, and that guy checks him. He, he checks this Padawan so good, but it's still like the old school Japanese vibes where in the beginning, when they draw their swords... Right? In some situations, it's not a one-hit kill, I killed you. It's no, I'm going to gauge 
how good you are. And if you're good, then I'm going to have to kill you. But if you're whack, I'm just going to shoot you to the side. So he goes, he takes out two lightsabers, right, red. And he just dashes at him. He blitz him. He just goes, bing, bing, bing. And he catches him real quick. The Padawan sees <clears throat> me, that he is outmatched. He is outmatched and outclassed, right? Like, no, outclassed. And he ends up technically, it looks like he died. <coughs> oh, God. I'm talking too much. Um, it looked like he died by the way that, like, they had, like, the, the sound where when the guy hits him, Oh, he was like, don, 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 like, as if he died. So then the Qui-Gon Jinn character comes in, and they start going at it, right? And obviously, the Qui-Gon, he wins, but he even said it himself. I'm lucky that I fought him now, because if he was younger, I would have been dead. But I liked how, even though the Padawan was out during that fight, he still tried to help him in the end. Because if you saw it, right? spoilers um the the padawan takes his lightsaber and he force pushes it towards the elder and the elder loses concentration and the qui-gon jinn character just takes one step in and just right through him and i'm just like oh shit perfect love this episode gave me qui-gon jinn Obi-Wan vibes gave me kind of I don't want to say a cowboy like the visuals gave me cowboy bebop vibes if you've watched it if you haven't watched that show go watch the show great show only like 20 episodes but it won multiple awards really great right episode 8 loved it a lot of talking this one reminded me a lot like um like that no not this one actually it's this one okay this one reminded me of early naruto so we got this random ass creature gets adopted into a family it's all loving and great but then time goes on so the family starts to bump heads right there's the old dad who's stuck in his old ways right very classic and then there's the oldest daughter who's like okay we have to do this to save ourselves and to go and prosper into the future, right? And then there's the the person who got adopted, like, hey guys, let's not fight, right? So they keep on bumping heads. One of them wants to go to the empire, one of them wants to defend their land, and the dad wants to obviously defend himself. We see the girl switch sides, she goes for the empire, like, all the classic shows that have that kind of dynamic there's the two parties like this and then there's the one person who's trying to be on both sides like hey guys let's not fight so she goes to be a bad guy and what ends up happening is the dad gives the youngest daughter the lightsaber and i want you guys to notice this every episode where we've seen a lightsaber except for maybe two of them they all look really what's the word it's like a priceless gem right like the way they have it they all knew that in every episode the lightsaber is like this very important beautiful ancient artifact and the way that they did it for this one was the same way it came in a nice box and it was all like beautifully presented i love that part i really love that so they gave the girl who was adopted the lightsaber and shit goes south, right? The Empire comes and they start fighting again. And like always, I, I feel like the reason why people didn't like this episode was just due to the fact of um, you kind of knew what was going to happen, right? The dad ends up fighting the daughter who went to the Empire, but he goes and says, I can't fight my daughter, right? Like, that's very cliche, right? And then the daughter who got adopted starts to fight him, well, fight her. And it was a good fight. But here's where it reminded me of Naruto and Sasuke. 
Naruto told Sasuke, you gotta come back to the village. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna save you. This girl goes and starts talking to her bigger sister like, we gotta be a family again. You have to come back. They start fighting, bing, bing, bing. She takes out the lightsaber. The older sister's upset, like, why does she have the lightsaber? She's adopted, right? I think that was foul. If you watch the beginning of this episode, I think that shit was foul as hell. So, they start going at it. it reminded me a lot of Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto! Sasuke! So, I really like the ending where the adopted one goes and she takes that last hit right bang bang and she and the older sister falls off when she falls off onto her ship and she's just there like yeah that's not gonna do much and she says i'm gonna bring your ass back and then like it ends right there but a lot of people didn't like it because like you kind of could tell right so that was that episode loved it, it was great um episode nine the last one Samurai Jack and that episode of Avatar when they were trying to like split into the mountain that's this episode but also I loved how it reminds us of the force right so we see this guy I forgot the character's name in most of these shows right it takes me a long time to remember characters names so we see this guy, he's going back to this village, right? And this vision keeps on haunting him. But, like, it haunts him to the point where when he starts seeing it, he can't do anything else, right? So, he's going to this village, he gets attacked, these people save him. To find out that one of the person who, who saved him was the queen of the village that he's trying to find. Like, he knows this person, he... He loves this person, they're friends, right? They're trying to go back to this village, right? They're going through this canyon. And this one was more funnier than the rest. Liked it, right? Um, all the blue skies are out, thank the Lord. Um, basically what happens is they're trying to sneak through back to the village. They get back to the village, right? And one of the guys, before they get back to the village, like, they go and say, hey, look, like, there's a... There's going to be a role that's going to be written in stone like there is a thing such as destiny things that are bound to happen and this guy keeps on saying no there is no destiny blah 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 but if you know something about the force there is somewhat of a destiny right so he gets to the village the sith lord that's messing everything up she doesn't even need to try She's using her force abilities to trigger that vision, right? And he keeps on seeing this vision of him killing some girl, but he just doesn't know, right? And he even told his own master there is no such thing as a destiny, as a destiny, like. And he gets to the Sith Lord, and this paid homage to Revenge of the Sith, in my views, right? So. He gets to the Sith Lord, she triggers the vision, and we haven't seen something like that. We've seen it in the books and stuff like that, because I know Count Dooku could technically do that. He could make you see things and, like, cloud your your judgment. Um, so, I'm happy that we finally see that in an animated show. Yes, it's not canon, but hey, still good to see. She triggers it, and he gets all discombobulated, right? And he's killing all the bad guys again but he's still kind of discombobulated and he kills a girl and it's the vision the vision happens and then he finally understands holy shit like these force visions are basically bound to happen but then like in the revenge of the sith no no spoilers the sith lord says hey we can save her. It's just you gotta come with me. So they do it. They save her. And he changes sides. Because he understands. Wait a minute. What I've been learning on this side. Is not as much as what I'll be learning on this side. And he changes sides. It's a bit heartbreaking. But I loved it. Every story was very unique. From the animation to the story itself. 
to the music in the background, it all had really great, how do I say this? They were all just great, except for episode two. Even though I say it was good, I give this whole thing a nine out of 10. This was my breakdown, my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. I do believe there's some things they could really branch off into, like the whole changing of colors of lightsabers, right? Um, we could go deeper into the Force, like how that last episode did. I feel like that one is very underrated. Nobody talks about that one. Not one TikTok, not one video has talked about this one episode, basically showing us the Force, the, the Force, Force, the Force visions can come true. You have to listen, you have to figure it out. And I feel like with life, that's also true too. Like we get these signs, but sometimes we don't piece it together in time until it's too late. You need to trust yourself. You need to see the bigger picture, right? So we can go and go deeper into the force. We could go into a different route with the changing of the lightsaber colors, right? We could go into the powered suits. There's different things that I really wish they could go deeper in my views two things are gonna well no there's two options that they have for a season two they might continue the stories so one two three right like they continue it or they get new um new anime companies to come in and um make their own stories I would like for the first one to happen so they could continue the stories, right? Maybe go longer with each episode because my downfall to this season one, every episode was like 15 minutes, 14 minutes. And I'm just like, what the hell? But I loved it all. I feel like they could really branch off and do a lot more with this. This can give us an extra five to 10 years worth of content. If you give each one of these their own long-term show, hell yeah. That should be awesome. But I do say people who haven't even touched Star Wars should at least check this out. At least check this out. And the people who don't want to watch it because it's not Star Wars. Star Wars is not animated. Even though anime is Japanese like culture, right? And Star Wars is basically influenced by Japanese uh, samurai old school culture so I mean hey but if you haven't checked it out go check it out if you check it out what do you think do you agree that most of these episodes are 9 out of 10 except for episode 2 do you give the full thing a 9 out of 10 or lower or do you think it was perfect what do you think let me know in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown love you guys be safe